Hello, my name is Tom Barnes. I'm back for the second in our series of films about the future of forests. In the first film, I talked about the threats facing our British trees, including drought, pests and pathogens, all of which are threatening the woodland in this country. But I also talked about the political opportunity that we have in 2020 to, to secure, grow and improve British woodlands for the future. We're all hearing and reading a lot in the press about tree planting and the benefits of, of trees in terms of mitigating the causes of climate change in the way that they absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen. But what about the woodland that we already have? Are we looking after this? And I'm here today with Dougal Driver to talk about the benefits of woodland management. Hi, I'm Dougal Driver. I'm the Chief Executive of Grown in Britain. I'm a forester and I love trees, woods and forests. So Dougal, tell us uh, what is woodland management? Well, woodland management is the interaction of us human beings with nature. Um, trees are obviously uh, natural, organic things that grow in many different ways. There's lots of different species. And whilst in some parts of the country, in special areas, it's important to let nature take its course because they may be very special. But in the vast majority of areas, we need to take these fantastic sources of material, manage them to maximise their potential for, for, for us and for the planet, because these things are very, very special and they produce very, very special products. So they need to be managed. Why is it important to manage woodlands? Well, if you leave these trees to grow on their own, they'll grow too close together and sunlight won't get to the forest floor. Uh, they'll grow thin and straggly. But in woods like this, which are well managed, where the trees have room to grow, they get uh, fatter, they put on girth, and that uh, provides us with timber that we can saw and provide furniture and construction materials. Mm -hmm. Left to their own devices, you know, they, they will get tall and a bit like thinning out carrots in a garden. You need, to, you need to put the meat onto fewer rather than all of those you plant in the first place. Exactly the same with trees. There are different systems in different places, whether you're in the uplands or the lowlands. You need to be able to apply different silvicultural systems, like agricultural systems on farms, silvicultural systems in forests, and you have different soil types as well. So you need to manage heathland soils and clay soils, stony rocky soils, all those sorts of things. And we have a myriad of species to use to do that. You mentioned different types of soil type and different types of forest. So uh, are there different types of woodland management? Yeah, there are. Um, in parts of the upland where we grow Sitka spruce for construction, then these are grown in a single rotation and they're not thinned. Whereas down here in the lowlands where we are at the moment, these trees are thinned regularly, maybe three or four times in their lifetime in order to um, put the meat onto those trees that we, we talked about. And also, of course, you need to think about some other parts of the country. Maybe there's small farms on woodlands, which are maybe um, small pockets producing firewood. They're managed in different ways. And there are some very special woodlands as well, um, ancient woodlands, semi-natural woodlands, where really man's touch needs to be exceptionally light so that they can um, be fantastic places for biodiversity and, and support those sort of veteran trees and all of that ecosystem that goes with that. So it is very, very much a case of seeing what's in front of you and working with, with what you see with nature. And then of course planning forward the, the forests of the future. We really need to be storing more carbon. We really need to be looking after the water that comes through the trees, through these places, and then producing those materials we need to stop importing them from around the world. I think you're touching there on, on why woodland management is important. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, they, these trees produce amazing materials. It's, it's not a fossil fuel and it's carbon neutral. It, that timber gets locked up and embodied into the things we see in our daily lives. The chairs we sit on and the buildings we, we live in with timber frame construction, etc. And with modern technology, we can, we can stick and glue these things together to make mm. wonderful tall buildings even. It's really important to to make the most of this fantastic material, as opposed to some other materials which have a, a high carbon and a high energy input. Mm. And whilst we produce this fantastic material from these trees, of course, listen to the birds here, the biodiversity is so alive. People can come and enjoy these forests for health and well-being. Mm. So it's a real win-win situation. Mm. In terms of woodland management, I mean, where are we at now? 
Well, about 40 odd percent of the UK's woodlands are considered as undermanaged. Mm -hmm. That's really not a great figure and we need to do something about that and bring woods back into management. I mean, bring them into state like this. This is a fantastic area, really well managed. We've got spruce here, Douglas fir, and we've got larch and Scots pine. So this woodland is also very resilient because it has different species so it can survive pest attacks, which unfortunately do happen in our yeah. woodlands. So there are two things that do threaten our woodlands at the moment, that under management and pests and disease. Okay, um, um, uh, okay so what's got us here then? I mean, how, how are we at the state where only 40% of our, or 60% of our woodland is managed yeah. and 40% isn't? Well, there's a very mixed ownership of the woodlands in the UK. Um, the Forestry Commission obviously own a lot, as do other uh, public landowners and NGOs. But there's a huge amount in small public ownership. And people own woodlands for many, many different reasons. They're, they're, they're wonderful places mm. to own and people have different objectives of management. But it's really important that everybody realises that every tree makes a difference. Every, every tree produces, mm. you know, it can produce a log. And if you don't import that log, and you reduce the carbon miles, you're making a difference. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I suppose the next question is where, where are we heading with the current policy? Um, what, what does the landscape look like? Yeah, I think it's important that we, we maybe take the opportunity to relook at the way we incentivize land management mm -hmm. now and get more of those woods back into management. Maybe we need to look at, instead of just talking about more trees everywhere and planting new areas we maybe need to think about well if you've already got woodlands on your land ownership and you want to get subsidy from government to plant some more maybe there's a, a connection to encouraging that woodland owner to manage what they've already got what are your hopes and fears for the future of woodlands and forests in the uk well tom it's a fantastic positive time everybody's talking about trees and woods and wanting more of them and so I just hope that we can take that interest from the public and get, use our skills and knowledge to impart knowledge to them, to make them understand that it's not just a question of buying a tree, sponsoring a tree and putting it in the ground and leaving it and expecting the planet to be saved through just doing that. Mm. So my hope is that that interest from the public you know produces more woods like this for our grandchildren which would be amazing mm. my fears well we are ravaged by pests and diseases and biosecurity is a real issue and ash has been uh, devastated is being devastated mm. by an imported disease so i hope we can get a grip on our biosecurity that we can look after our own a little bit more as we move forward and treat these trees and woods you know as real special cases and protect them from from pests and diseases. So I have some fears around that, but I'm exceptionally hopeful about um, this, this interest we have in this, this, these wonderful places, and of course, this wonderful material that it produces. Mm -hmm.